This week, we break down Star Trek Discovery's series finale with Captain Burnham herself, Sonequa Martin-Green, and executive producer and co-showrunner, Michelle Paradise. We go behind the scenes on the finale's epic Infinity Tunnel, and we pay tribute to Discovery's impact on Star Trek and the legacy it leaves for all of us to enjoy. A special edition of The Ready Room kicks off right now. Hey nerds, I'm Will Wheaton, and this is The Ready Room, your official behind the scenes hub for the Star Trek universe. The crew of the USS Discovery has completed their final mission. And so today we honor the series that launched a new golden era of Star Trek and reflect on its legacy. Plus a little later, it is my privilege and my honor to welcome Captain Michael Burnham herself, Sonequa Martin-Green, as well as executive producer and co-showrunner Michelle Paradise to The Ready Room. We'll talk about the series finale episode, Life Itself, and what Star Trek Discovery means to them after all these years. But we can't discuss any of it without stepping deep into spoiler territory, so I am calling for a black alert! If you haven't seen Star Trek Discovery's final episode, Life Itself, grab your closest streaming device, watch the finale on Paramount Plus, and come back here for the party. But first, this season, to see Michael Burnham and the Discovery crew hunting for the technology that sowed the seeds of life throughout our universe. In this week's episode, Burnham finds herself where it all began, the Infinity Tunnel. We put together a behind the scenes look at the tunnel's creation that you're gonna love. Control room, oh, who am I kidding? There is only one person here who can send us off. Sonequa? Let's fly. We started talking about the Infinity Tunnel before Michelle had written that script. She wanted a place that Burnham could go to that was created by the progenitors that would be a mind bender. It's the most complicated thing I've ever seen. It really pushed the AR wall technology. There were charts and graphs for which environment was gonna be in which square on the wall, and it was calculus. The Infinity Tunnel is this massive space that uh, exceeds all the way, as far as you can imagine, forward and as far as you can imagine, uh, backward. And between each sort of uh, walkway, you see uh, a brand new world. Alatende also wanted the environments to sort of reach out into our practical space. So they felt like they were coming right through the portal. So we wound up adding mountain tips and steam from lava and tree leaves. So then we started thinking, oh wow, like this is kind of exciting. Well, what if Burnham and Maul kind of went into these other planets and we got to experience them? We are, uh, we out here. <laughs> so in the finale episode, uh, I would say we're pretty busy. <laughs> you know, 21,000 gallons of heated water that is standing by to deliver tremendous amounts of rain on that set. We have three V8 fans and two VW fans standing by, one on a telehandler to be able to deliver gale force winds as they try and navigate a fight sequence on this planet. So in my opinion, what makes a great and believable fight sequence is to see that our cast believe in the movement that they're doing. Yeah, let's do that because that'll actually help us for the phaser. Yeah. So let's yeah. do that. So let's go slowly. Oh. One. Of course, I love stunts and, and I love fighting and that sounds weird, but I, I do. I love stunt fighting. When I got the part, I asked, can I have the stunt coordinator's contact information? Because I have to tell him that I can't do anything. <laughs> So I emailed Chris McGuire, who is the most wonderful human being, and he was so kind in his response. He's like, come in, we'll work with you, we'll see what's up. <laughs> Not nervous at all. The first thing we do in regards to fights is just pick the, the story apart in pieces, like, like with a fine tooth comb. Every single detail to tell the story that we can. Then we try to figure out what headspace the character's in during that sequence, and then we adapt that to the fight. Three, two, one, action! 
The infinity hallway fight sequence was challenging because if you look at it, it's actually five or six different fights that are occurring. So each of those five different fights has to be rehearsed. It took everything from everybody to get that done. And of course, by the end of the season, we're all tired. And that was definitely a part of it. But that also makes the experience more fulfilling because you're pressing against something and you're overcoming it together. The moments that I had with Eve, that piece, uh, transitioning from, you know, being separate to being together and being of two minds to being of one mind. I'm, you know, that's, that's the heart of Trek right there. Those were all worlds you created? No, we found them here. What I love the most um, is, is that the progenitor reveals that they didn't create it, that they found it. Because of course, what that says is, we don't know, you know, it, it, in, in this sci-fi story, you know, the, the possibilities are still endless. Sadiqwa, Michelle, welcome. I am so glad that you are here. This is such a special day. This is we're really codifying the end of Star Trek Discovery's five-year mission. Uh, how are you feeling? First of all, thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. We're very it's happy. A, it's a real privilege, I mean that. Thank you, ditto. And um, yeah, I think, I don't know, I, I think I can speak for you only because we've spoken about this yeah. together, but you know, we feel, how we feel today is, is because it has been so long since we shot this. It's not as raw. That's right. Yeah. It's, not as, it's not as open, it's not, as, it's not so much like an exposed nerve in, in a sense. Um, there, there was always peace, there was always delight, there was always gratitude, and there was very much the bitter and very much the sweet yeah. at the same time. But now I, I, I'm getting a sense, and, and again, I think you are too, of, of that sense of completion and that sense of completeness and that peace. I think our ownership of it yeah. has, has really settled mm -hmm. in our ownership of, of, of what we did and, you know, who we are to each other and, and everything. And so it's, 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 it's quite lovely that there's been this much time mm -hmm. and now be, because of everything, because of the, the, the strike and everything, now we can talk about it from this perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nice. And it's interesting having had that time and space to now come back and, and look at it. it yeah. It's, uh, it's almost like coming back to it with a, fresh perspective that doesn't have the angsty feeling yeah. of the last day of shooting yes. isn't there because that was really heightened yeah. emotion and now it, it sort of feels like um, more celebratory um, because the I don't know that the the emotions have have subsided Settle a little down. bit and we can just sort of sit in the the feeling of celebration and Wow, look what we yeah. did. Look what you did. Look like, what you did. I mean, too. Yeah. We are going to talk all about that. Excellent. When you were here at the very beginning of the season, yes. we spoke rather obliquely yes. about how this season of Discovery paid a little homage yeah. to an existing Star Trek series, which we all know now is Next Generation. <laughs> an episode called The Chase. Mm -hmm. When The Chase happened, I, no, I never would have thought back then that it was going to plant the seeds through yeah. all the different series that yeah. it did. Talk to me about choosing <laughs> this mission to go find the progenitors. <laughs> uh, where did that come from? Well, it's interesting. We actually started talking about it back in season four when we had the 10C. And I mean, one of the things about the chase that I always have loved is that it's, it's this really big idea I mean, it's this huge idea, these beings that seeded life as we know it. And then the end of the episode, they just kind of, they're going to move on to the next mission. And it's this, it just felt like, oh my gosh, they just met, like that was their creator in a sense. And so we were, you know, we were kind of playing with these themes of connection in season four. And we were wondering, should the progenitors, we named them that, I, I should also say, should that uh, come up? And we've got the 10C and it just, it kind of became too much, but it was an idea that really, really stuck with all of us. And so when we were looking at this season, the idea of that 
message in a bottle that our heroes and Next Gen received. Um, we just kept asking what happened after that. And, you know, on Discovery, we always send Burnham on the big missions, the big ideas, the big themes. And it felt like, wow, there's, you know, there's nothing much that's bigger than that that we can think yeah. of. I'm sorry, has Discovery ever had a small mission? <laughs> Not really. I feel like every mission's been a big mission. Yeah. It's true. it's true. Building, just like bigger, bigger, bigger. Just from a storytelling perspective, it felt like a really wonderful opportunity to explore what happened after that for uh not to delve too far into picard and the team obviously yeah. but how could that play out uh here how could that play out for burnham mm -hmm. uh with her arc over the course of the season and in the series and uh it was just a, it was a really exciting idea that that i'm really happy that we got to do S structurally um, I thought the season kind of followed similarly what we got in The Chase, the series of tests and like, you gotta be worthy. Oh, yeah. And I loved that idea and it was exciting. And uh, there was such a fun Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of like, they don't have this information yeah. mm -hmm. piece to it. I imagine that this must have been so fun to build. Is there like a board with red strings on it somewhere? <laughs> a murder <laughs> board. It all together? Um, we knew coming out, season four had a, had a heaviness to it. it. It still had, of course, all of its light, fun moments, but, you know, it was uh, written and shot in a time of COVID, the stuff that happened with our characters and book in particular. So we came into season five knowing that we wanted uh, a bit of a lighter feel to it. We called it our action adventure Indiana Jones season. And from right. just from the first episode, yeah. you can see that with the sand oh, yeah. runners and mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the idea of a quest, you know, that kind of um, the Holy Grail-ish sort of thing and the and the clues that they would find along the way really seemed like a fun way to structure the season and uh, gave us some really, really wonderful episodes and lots of fun stuff for our heroes to do. Because this episode is kind of inspired by The Next Generation, uh, we have recently been able to speak with some of my Star Trek family and some members of the extended Star Trek family and they wanted to deliver a couple <gasps> of messages to you, Sinequa. So control what? room, if you would please uh, make wow. it so. Sinequa has the qualities which I struggled to achieve during my first season of Next Generation. She has authority and leadership, but there is also a human being behind that space captain. When I was a child, my father made us, me and my two sisters, sit down and watch the reruns of Star Trek, the original series, because he knew that it was really important for his three little brown girls to see Nichelle Nichols as Uhura on television, to see ourselves represented. Sonequa playing Michael as the captain, the captain. What impact she has done for all these young brown and black little girls and boys that she has given them the permission to be the captain. She is, to me, one of my favorite humans. Kind, spiritual, present, funny, generous. Sonequa Martin Green is a gem. Bam. Oh my God, I'm. <laughs> Sonequa Martin Green is a gem. She is. <sighs> What? <laughs> Literally, there's tears on my pants. <laughs> That's all right. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness, thank y'all. Oh, that is not something I would have expected in a trillion years. If anybody deserves a tribute. Oh. I mean. Oh, thank you, wow. And especially from from anyone, from you, from the three of them, from what you just said, it's, oh, wow. I'm gonna, um, I'm, try I'm trying to play it cool right now because I want to just keep crying, but we got to go on with the interview. <laughs> I get so it. So I'm not, I get ooh, it. Um, wow. Thank you. That was amazing. That's, see, I'm just gonna cry again. You can ask Michelle a question. <laughs> I will tell you that since I was a little kid, Frakes has been my father figure. And I know that he comes and works on all the different shows. And you're one of the people mm. that Frakes just adores. Mm. And, and now I will ask Michelle some questions so that you can have your moment. 
the decision at the very end of this episode. If you don't mind my asking, what exactly is our mission? I'm going to bring you to a set of coordinates in deep space. Then me and your crew will leave. After that, you wait. And Burnham says that I don't understand craft. I was like, ah, oh, it's Calypso! <laughs> Just talk to me about that decision. Oh, like, yeah. Like, like, how fun is that? That, that just so seemed... fun. That was something that uh, Alex and I had talked about for quite some time. Uh, I wasn't actually on the show when they did the Calypso short. And we, he always felt, and, and I did too once I came on board, you have to make that connection. You can't leave the hanging threads on a, on a show like this. And so... Uh, when we were able to come back and do the coda, it was 100% we have to find a way to tie it in. I wanted to talk about that coda. You're playing much older versions. I 100% believed both of you <laughs> as an old married couple. <laughs> Completely <laughs> believed you, you as an old That's married couple. That's a high couple. compliment. All season long, I'm just like, I really want her and Book to work it out. And they did. The coda especially, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it as a touch point because okay. here is this poetic conclusion that ties everything together in this overarching way but with the but with the gentlest touch and that is Michelle okay and i i feel like the 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 sensitivity required for that the insight required for that not to mention the the gifting just the gifting itself the craft itself but just the sensitivity the wherewithal, the engagement, the understanding. Her, she has taken in this story and these characters with, to such a degree that it's as if she's wrapped her entire heart around them. And so now you have this, this great coming together of heart and mind uh, with her. And it's, it's, it is the thing that I cherish the most about you because that is how she came. She came into this already set up that's not easy to do. Um, she came in and took took it away. I think I've said before that it's like you were some sort of mother bird that that like snatched us up and then flew flew with us, like flew away with us. So thank you, thank you. When Star Trek Discovery premiered in 2017, it launched a new golden or latinum era of Star Trek. As we say farewell to Captain Burnham and her crew, we have prepared a special tribute to the show its cast and crew, and its legacy. Hello, Captain. The first reaction when you get offered a role in, a, in any Star Trek anything is just the excitement to be part of this legacy, this television legacy and history. It's huge. When I found out that Trek was coming back to TV, I remember being really impressed. It wasn't just that Trek was coming back, it's that Trek was coming in a new way. It was coming on a streaming platform, and I thought, ooh, brave move, bold move. Be bold. Be brave. Black alert. When the idea of bringing Star Trek to television came up, I was daunted because Trek on television holds a very unique place. Discovery kicked off the modern age of Star Trek, and there was a lot of pressure initially. As much as I was excited about the idea of bringing back Trek, I also knew that I didn't want to do it just to do it. We had to have a great reason. And in building it, we found our reason in Burnham and particularly in Sonequa Martin-Green. I was shocked and I was impressed. And then especially with them wanting to have a black woman at the helm and they weren't going to come off of that. That was a necessity for them. I was super impressed with that too. I don't see as many black women in that position. And to have somebody like her hold your hand and say, we can do this together. It's something you don't see every day, and I am beyond grateful for this whole experience. I grew up closeted and gay. I didn't know that there was a place for me. I didn't know that there was a space for me. I felt like I was broken. I've often looked back and said, well, what if that kid had had this show to watch and been able to see Stamets and Culber? And what a difference that would have made. Star Trek is like a rallying cry around a way to think about what kind of person you want to be in the world. And that's very meaningful to be a part of. I don't know if there's ever going to be a job for the rest of my life that has as much like personal meaning and effect on my own life and growth as this one has. I needed these people in my life, and I'd like to think that some of them needed me as well. It's a huge thing to be a part of one of the, if not the most diverse casts on all of television and how they all got to 
be heroes in their own way. We are all capable of being heroic. We're all capable of saving the world and the universe if we choose to do it. You're one of the progenitors. I've been waiting for you. Every season on Discovery, we, uh, we explore big themes and big ideas, and this season, meeting those who created us, that's, I think, a really satisfying way to ultimately end the series. Good morning. Where the story goes was, um, was deeply, deeply touching, because I remember how these two characters met. <laughs> Cut to the last moments of seeing them together. This is a couple enjoying life. I think the fans are really gonna enjoy that moment. Welcome back, Admiral Burnham. It's been a while. I always wanted to connect Discovery back to our Star Trek short, Calypso. For fans of Calypso, you'll see the connection. And if you haven't watched Calypso, the finale will be satisfying in its own way, but it plants a little Easter egg that will then allow you to go watch Calypso and see how the continuity of it worked. In looking at the coda, Captain? It was a big challenge because we're not just ending the season, but we're ending a series. And ending a series is always a challenge in and of itself. You want to do right by all of the beloved characters, and saying goodbye is going to be hard. Time marches on, but you get to hold these memories of like joy and togetherness forever, and I think that's kind of the message that the show lands on. At the very end, it was all about this family, and it's really a beautiful moment and a beautiful way to, to tie it all together. It was so beautiful. I thought that that was the perfect thing to end on. So many memories. Star Trek Discovery's legacy, we have a number of things. We have so many things that are important. I'm actually gonna read them because I don't wanna miss any of them. Michael Burnham is the first black woman to lead a Star Trek series as its captain. Discovery is the most inclusive Star Trek series that has existed. Would you just talk a little bit about writing about the aspiration when we live in the reality? Mm. I think the aspiration matters hugely. It shows us how we can be and who we can be. And the idea that we're still trying to fight for equal pay in you know, now 2024, um, I would love to be in a world where that's not even a question. I would love to be in a world where we're not talking about the first black female captain of a starship because there are so many others. And I think that's, that's one of the wonderful things about Star Trek as a franchise and each iteration of this show um, is it, it has always uh, pushed in those boundaries and pushed for uh, inclusivity and representation and, and shown us who we can be. And the world is so slow. The world is inching and inching and we take steps forward and stumble back. And, um, but we, we have this and, and other shows as well to, sh to help demonstrate who we can be. And coming up, Starfleet Academy, Section 31, mm -hmm. featuring Giorgio, oh. who we love. Of course. Who started out yeah. in the very first scene of Star Trek Discovery. Yeah. Giorgio and Burnham on a sand planet. Mm -hmm. I trust you with my life, Commander Burnham, but it doesn't change the fact that you're lost. From there to here, when Michelle won the Oscar, I was like, well, we've lost her forever. <laughs> We're never gonna be able to get her back. This tells me that Michelle Yeoh is like, dude, I wanna make this movie. This matters to me. I wanna yeah. do this, I care about mm -hmm. it. When you look at that first sequence in the pilot, in you know, on that sand planet, all the way to the ship, just like bloop away. Yeah. It's so profound. It captures so much when you zoom all the way out. I looked at the call sheet for day one. Oh, oh wow. Gosh. Earlier today. Wow. Wow, that must have been a trip. Yeah, because um, we started rehearsals January 2nd, 2017. Wow. And that was, we rehearsed wow. for a week, I believe it was. Might have been 10 days or so. 
And um, I, I, I didn't catch the date. I, I didn't look at the date, but it was like day one, 101, you oh know. Oh my gosh. It was like, oh my gosh. We know our characters at some point. Yeah. You know, like there's a lot of time where we think we do. And then there's that moment. Oh, yeah. wait, I didn't. Now I do. Uh-huh. Do you remember when it happened for you with, with Michael? Oh, that's a good, that's a good question. Because it would have um, been a long, 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 long time ago. But I'm just wondering. Yeah. You brought it up. No, I think. And, and here we go again, because I think I think I have I've had the pleasure of, of being someone playing someone who fundamentally changed. Yeah. Fundamentally and permanently changed for the better, fell forward. Yeah. Right. As all these characters did. All these characters got to fall forward. Sorry. Being able to be this black woman who was able to fall forward, who was in a world where that was okay, where she was allowed to have a loss get her closer to who she was supposed to be. Um, I, I will always be grateful uh, for, for Michelle and for Alex Kurtzman and for the writers and, and, and the producers for that. But I feel like I had a moment where I knew who I was as Burnham, but then I had another moment when Burnham changed. And then another moment when Burnham changed. Wow. It happened a lot. And that is not, that's not something you usually get. Wow, yeah. what a gift that must have been. How, sure how exciting and fun. So exciting. And, and, and here we also have th th that very quality, you know, I, I'm, I'm so grateful to be able to do it as a black woman, but then we also have it in all these other people. We have it with all these other stories and all these other characters, you know? You look at season one of this character and they are not the same. No. And they also had these these moments where, okay, I know who I am. No, actually now it's season two and I'm totally different. Okay, oh, actually now it's season four and I'm completely different. Okay, now, you know what I mean? Um, I think that that's... That's so cool. <laughs> you. I wish I could keep talking to you, but we are completely out of time. Thank oh. you. Um, thank you for everything. I just want to say on behalf of fandom, I, I think I can do that. Thank you for opening up this new age of Star Trek. Thank you for everything you have done in telling Michael's story mm -hmm. and everything. There's a lot of stuff that has meant so much to me deeply, personally, mm -hmm. um, uh, that I have talked about over, over the years on Ready Room that have happened as a result of Star Trek Discovery. Mm -hmm. It matters and it's important and I'm really grateful for it. Mm. And uh, it's been a privilege and a pleasure to be this tiny little, like, you know, kind of shuttlecraft drafting off of all the work that y'all are doing. Um, but just thank you. I think Legacy Star Trek can, can say, um, we're really, really proud of you. Thank you. That means yeah. a lot. That closes the hailing frequencies on another season of The Ready Room. Now we are going to take a very brief shore leave. We might visit Ryza where I will make sure I do not step on any new plants. Maybe we'll book some time at Quark's. Don't worry, we will be back on duty in the ready room very soon for lots more from the Star Trek universe. Until then, I'm Will Wheaton. Live long and prosper.